It was a major discovery, one that would see the country leap to the coveted oil producer nations. The March 25, 2012 announcement by then head of state Mwai Kibaki brought to an end a near decade exploration. This morning, I have been informed by the Minister for Energy that our country has made a major breakthrough in our oil exploration. The dusty and arid fields of Lokichar in the heart of the then expansive Turkana district would now be best described as Kenya's new oil fields. British oil exploration firm Talo Oil said it had sunk only one well and made the discovery at Kodekode village in Nakukula's location. Talo in a statement then added that the discovery was beyond the expectation. It's a very rare event for a, an exploration well in a new frontier like this to be a success. We are really pinching ourselves with this result. Since then, activities at the Block 10BB in Gamia 1 have been on a high. This has since been followed by further successful exploration in the South Lokichar Basin at the Amosing, Twiga, Etoko, Ekalezwan, Agete, Ewoi, Ekunyuk, Etom, Erut, and Emukuya oil accumulations by Talo. To date, Talo Oil has conducted appraisal in over 20 wells in Trukana County, this yielding an estimated 4 billion barrels of crude oil in the country. But the journey has now been devoid of challenges. Managing community expectations while maintaining the journey to oil production had seen some bumpy rides. In October 2013, Talo suspended operations in Trukana East and Trukana South sub-counties after hundreds of locals held protests at its installations demanding jobs from the company. Safety first! Talo only resumed operations of Tadil brokered between the national government, Trukana County and local leaders. The firm committed to double its social investment to 340 million shillings annually and offering more training scholarships to enable locals take up high cadre jobs. With this behind it, the tussle moved away from the oil fields to parliament. The elephant in the room, the Petroleum Exploration Development and Production Bill, would drag on for years. This delaying the planned early oil project mooted in 2016. The debate also took a political angle in the run-up to the August 8th election at a rally in Trukana with President Kenyatta losing his call as he spoke on the matter. Mutu wa kisimama hapa aseme, ti uhuru wakona haja na mafuta ya uengine. Ashindwe na muu, shaitani mwusenzi. Katiba inasema gawa mzuri. Sisi hapa, tuna uwezo, unaweza tusaidia iyo uwezo, tuweze kusimamia pesa hii na tuweke hazina ambaye ni ya kesho na kesho kutwa. Mwesimua rais, ukikamilisha hiyo, utasikika hapa. Kwa kufikiria mimi ni mtu ya kutishwa, watafute mwingine. Eh, kura ni kura na tutakuja kuomba kama wengine. Mutupatie, mukoze kutupatia. Ah, kwaani muna fikiria dunia itaisha? Eh, wacha story mingi hapa bana. In December 2017, the government once again halved the 10% share of oil revenues to host communities. Surprisingly, the community leaders on May 19th agreed to a 5% allocation in a meeting held at State House Nairobi. This opening the way for the early oil project. An agreement that will be based on us sharing the revenue on the basis of 75% to all the people of Kenya through the national government, 20% to the county government, and 5% to the local community. The Trukana people and the leadership will now support the program for Ali Oil. The journey also faced headwinds when neighboring Uganda that Kenya had all along quoted to build a joint pipeline to the port of Mombasa changed tune. Kampala announcing that it had opted for a pipeline through Tanzania, this receiving the backing of oil multinational total to the disbelief of Nairobi. Kenya still confident that it will build the over 1,000-kilometer pipeline from Lokichar to Lamu to evacuate its crude oil to her coastline. Even as the oil evacuation process begins, it will not be until 2022 that Kenya will officially begin its commercial oil production. Sam Getuko, Citizen TV.